Welcome to the Claremont College's Library Site Right with Zotero video tutorial. In this video, we will learn about Zotero and how to use it for citing sources, managing your reference library, and generating in text citations and bibliographies. Zotero is free and easy to use. However, it's just one of many tools available. The Claremont College's Library recommends that you use any reference management tool that works best for you. Zotero works best when you have both the 5.0 software and the browser extension added to your computer. The software and the extension work together to help you import, manage, and cite your sources. When using the 5.0 software, you can add sources manually, manage and edit source fields, add notes, and generate in-text citations and bibliographies using either Word or Google Documents. It's important to note that Zotero is not yet compatible with Apple Pages. When generating in-text and bibliographic citations, Zotero allows you to use over 9,500 different citation styles and takes most of the guesswork out of the broader citation style rules. Another option is to work within Zotero Online Library by signing in to Zotero.org. The online library mimics what you will see within the 5.0 version but will require you to have continuous internet connection. Another useful tool is zbib.org. zbib.org was created to help you quickly grab a source through its unique identifier, such as a URL or DOI, then easily generate a bibliography using any of the 9,500 citation styles available within Zotero. You can then conveniently share your bibliography as a link or a downloadable document. The zbib.org site will save your content as long as you do not clear your browser history. If you are currently using another reference library tool and would like to change to Zotero, all you'll need to do is export your reference library and then import to Zotero. Zotero allows for many file types when importing from your previous reference library. Lastly, if you are working on a group project, you can work together to gather sources by using the Groups module from the online Zotero library. Sign in to Zotero.org, then go to Groups. From there, you can create your group and add contributors. Be sure to select an appropriate title and privacy level for your group folder. After creating the folder, contributors will see it appear in their Zotero 5.0 program and in their online library. At this point, the group can add and remove sources, insert notes, edit source fields, insert citations into a group paper, generate a bibliography, and much more. To get started, sign up for a free Zotero account using either your personal or school email address. Then, download both Zotero 5.0 and the browser extension to your computer. Zotero will detect what operating system and browser you're using. Next, you'll want to get organized. Now that we know what Zotero is and how it works, let's get our reference library prepared for sources by learning how to get organized. Keeping your reference library organized will help you to reduce stress, allow you to manage your thoughts, and create the structure or flow of your project. If you're working on a research paper, you can start by creating a folder for that paper topic. Then, make subfolders which can be organized by the sections of that paper. For example, if you are an environmental analysis student and you want to write your senior thesis on cemeteries as community spaces, you might create a folder called EA Senior Thesis. Then, you can create subfolders within that main folder to organize your project. There might be a folder called Introduction, which could include sources such as books, articles, and reference materials that might help you to broadly talk about your topic. And then also include other folders such as case studies, where you might import scholarly and popular articles that talk about specific instances of how cemeteries are used by communities for events and social practices. No matter how large or small your project, keeping your reference library organized will help you see the flow of your paper, identify any topical gaps, and help you to quickly eliminate unnecessary or duplicate sources. Now let's learn to start importing sources using the different features found within Zotero. One simple way to import sources into Zotero is to use the drag and drop feature. Zotero allows you to drag and drop sources from your computer to your reference library. If you frequently download PDFs to your computer or desktop, this can be a helpful tool for you. 
After you have downloaded an item to your desktop, simply drag and drop it into your Zotero 5.0 library. The quality of the metadata or descriptive information will vary depending on where you obtained your source. For example, if you downloaded your source from Library Search or one of the library's databases, you may end up with more complete descriptive information which will help you to cite correctly. On the other hand, if you have downloaded your source from the World Wide Web, you may not get complete descriptive information depending on who created the source. But don't worry, you can always add it later by entering it directly into the source fields within your Zotero library. Next, let's practice importing a source from Library Search using Chrome as the browser. Starting at the library website, go to Library Search and look for a source in your topic area. I'm going to do a search for microplastics and beaches and California. I want to find articles published in the last three to five years relating to this topic. Once my results are displayed, I'll use the limiters, also known as filters, to limit the results to show items that are most relevant to my search. The first thing I'll do is limit my results by location to those items held by the Claremont College's library. That way I can find items that may be available now. Next, I'll filter by format to show only articles as I don't want to see print books, media, or ebooks. And finally, I will choose the date range of the last five years because I want to find the most current items that are held. At this point, you have a couple of options to import sources into Zotero. You can either select one item to import or do a batch import for all of the items which appear in the current page of my results list. To learn more about an article, you can click on the title to read the description or abstract, then open it on your device. When you're importing a single PDF into Zotero, it's best to first open it. That way, Zotero will import the full text PDF along with the descriptive information or metadata, such as title, author, publisher, and publication date, which will then be used for the citation. When you click on Zotero's browser extension icon, it will give you an option to select the folder where you want your source to go. Having your folders organized ahead of time makes this process easier. You will also notice that it imports the metadata or descriptive information that you will use to generate a citation, as well as the full text of the article. You can also add tags to organize your information. In my case, I will add the keyword California as I will be comparing Oregon beaches later. Now let's go back to do a batch import. Typically, you would want to do a batch import if you have multiple items relevant to your search that you want to import at the same time. In this case, I'm going to import five different articles and save them to my staging folder for my literature review. Later on, when I'm ready to read those articles, I may go back to my staging folder and move them to folders based on topic or theme. Importing an ebook is slightly different. Because of copyright and license restrictions, you may only import the metadata and the link to the record where the ebook was found. But you may not import the entire ebook to your library unless it's in the form of a downloadable PDF. Let's get started. I'm going to complete a search relating to my topic, then filter down to only see items that are held by the Claremont College's library. Next, I'll use the format filter to show only ebooks in my results. When you find a source that you are ready to import, click on the Zotero icon in your browser extension. You'll notice that the icon may look like a folder, document, or book. This icon will change depending on what Zotero is able to recognize in your browser screen. After you import the ebook metadata, Go back to Zotero and make sure that you change the link to the library record link so that you can go back to access it later. The link that is typically imported is the publisher's permalink, which means that it may ask you for a different login and can be confusing when you try to open it later from Zotero. Using the library link will mean that double-clicking on the book in Zotero will always take you back to the library record so that you can click on View eBook to read. Now, let's use the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool allows you to import the information or metadata about a source by just using its unique identifier, such as a DOI, 
ISBN, or a PMID. This tool can be useful if you identify an interesting article from another researcher's references list and you want to import the citation to your Zotero library. To do this, you will just need to click on the Magic One tool, then paste or type in the DOI, ISBN, or PMID to import the metadata for your item. When using the magic wand, it's important to note that this does not guarantee that you will also be able to import the full text of the item. You may try to import the full text by right-clicking and selecting Find Available PDF. If that doesn't work, you may need to return to the library website, go to Library Search, and then search by the title of the article, open the PDF, then import it to Zotero using the browser extension. Zotero also allows you to import popular sources, such as magazine and news articles, or image and film citations through databases, search engines, and social media. Since Zotero's main goal is to help you organize and cite your sources, it's important to note that you may only be able to import the metadata and link to your media source rather than the actual item or media file. Remember, it's important to always double check that your metadata is complete so that your citation will be complete too. Now for the easy part. Let's learn how to use Word with Zotero to generate in-text citations and a bibliography. Zotero is compatible with both Word and Google Documents, but it is best used within Word for all of the features and functionality. First, make sure Zotero 5.0 and Word are both open on your computer. Then begin typing your paper. When you want to insert a citation from a source in your library, just choose Zotero from your main menu. Then choose Add or Edit Citation. Click on the Z to see the classic library view, and then select the item that you wish to cite. When you are ready to generate a bibliography, also called Works Cited for MLA, and References for APA, use the Add or Edit Bibliography icon from your menu. Make sure that you are on the last page of your paper and that you have added the appropriate title. Place your cursor where you want your list of citations to begin and click on Add or Edit Bibliography to watch it appear. You'll notice that Zotero will do all of the work to format your citations based on your citation style rules. Depending on your system, you may need to edit the font type, size, or make it double spaced. If you started in one style and need to change to a different one, just go to Document Preferences, then select your new citation style. Zotero will update your in-text citations and bibliography for you based on this new style. If you need to go back and add an additional citation, no problem. Insert the in-text citation in the body of your work and Zotero will automatically update your bibliography for you. In Google Documents, this process will look fairly similar. Just use the Zotero menu at the top to begin inserting in-text citations and to generate your bibliography. I hope that this video has been helpful. To get further assistance, visit our Zotero guide on the Claremont College's library website or make an appointment with your subject librarian.